The New York subway, one of the largest subway systems in the world. Millions of people travel it each day. Almost all of them, for sure, never think about what microorganisms live down there. On the walls, on the floors, on the seats and ceilings and handrails. A team of hotshot medical researchers in Cornell University's Mason Lab asked the question, what's on those walls? And decided they were going to find out. So the way we take environmental samples is with these kinds of swabs. So it's like a Q-tip and you swab whatever you're wanting to sample. You kind of like twist it around and you usually need to swab the surface for about three minutes to be able to get enough bacteria to get enough DNA to be able to analyze it. So once you're done with your sample, you just stick it in, break it off, screw it back, take this back to the lab, put it in the freezer until you're ready to analyze it. And then once the samples are collected, we come back here into the lab and then we extract the DNA, uh, purify it, and then uh, we prepare some libraries to be sequenced. Depending on the sequencer and the platform and everything, it could take, you know, as, as little as fast as hours or days to as long as a few weeks until we get the data. And then the bioinformatics comes in. And so from the bioinformatics side is there's a lot of different algorithms and tools out there that basically make sense of this code. Then it's the fun part that it's, okay, well, what did it find? What do these results mean? What are these microbes that I don't even know what they are? Like searching through them, finding out the annotations, what's interesting about them, what has been published and looked about these guys. Then it's about, okay, well, how can I summarize this? Once the data was summarized, the researchers could start to analyze the conclusions. Our ecosystems or our environments um, mirror the bacteria that are in our human gut microbiome. So if you enter a hospital room, um, in a couple of hours, that hospital room, if you swab the surfaces in the hospital room, it will mirror the bacteria that are actually found on your skin surfaces and in your um, intestinal tract. So that's one of the things that I find really intriguing. The researchers found over 15,000 species of bacteria living in the New York City subway system. But thankfully, their research showed that the majority of them were harmless. And surprisingly, they discovered that each subway stop had its own unique microbial signature. One subway station that had been flooded during Hurricane Sandy had bacteria that still resembled a marine environment years after the event. They also uncovered some more concerning findings. There's a higher proportion of uh, antibiotic-resistant bacteria in the subway stations around hospitals than others. So I think multiple drug resistance in bacteria is a problem, in particular in hospitals with uh, hospital-acquired infections. And so you can go to hospital for one thing and then stay there for something else because you've acquired an infection from bacteria that's resistant to antibiotics. And realizing that those bacteria are found at a higher proportion in the environment around hospitals is slightly preoccupying, and I think that is something that we will have to pay very close attention to when thinking about design of hospital environments and, and how maybe to isolate those from the, the, the urban environment around it. I think it's very important for people to realize that our um, genetic and microbial dynamics impact our environment just as much as our environment impacts us. This data altogether once it's collected, has a lot of applications that could um, affect the world. Right, I think it can have tremendous implications for how public health officials respond to infectious disease epidemics like the Ebola and the Zika virus, the implications it has for antimicrobial resistance markers, and um, how it helps us really formulate our ideas about the urban environment and how we can improve upon urban planning and, and city planning. DNA sequencing is, is kind of like, a, like an instrument that allows you to see the blueprint of living beings. So now we have this instrument in our hands and, and so we can ask the question of like, well, what are we gonna look at? It's kind of if you had just invented the microscope and you're like, well, what am I gonna look at? I wanna look at everything. This is something that has never been explored before. The purpose is to map the urban genome. And one of the other ideas of, of the project is to create smart cities uh, from the uh, genetic surveillance and, and microbial monitoring of our urban environment. I would say a lot of people that I've spoken to, our collaborators and whatnot, 
they've all said they've thought about a lot of this like 10 years ago, five years ago, but the science wasn't there, and now it is. Science is not just about the lab. It's about the whole world as being your laboratory, and that's what this specific project has taught me. It's taught me that the subway system um, can be your laboratory, and you can use whatever you learn there um, and apply it to you know, the laboratory setting. You could swap anything, you could sequence anything, and so there's really no limit to what we could do. The results are just the beginning. The team recently formed an international consortium of 47 countries, each now working to map the urban microbiome of their mass transportation systems. The filmmakers would like to thank Cornell University's Mason Lab for their hard work, their dedication, and their contribution to the advancement of scientific research.